This is Scary Terry's Saturday Nightmare from Rock 94.7. Welcome to 13 Questions on Scary Terry's Saturday Nightmare. Tonight's guest represents a band who's been making quite a few waves in metal lately. They're called Hung. Their founder is a world-renowned classically trained violinist by the name of Lyris Hung. Our guest is the bass player for Hung, Sam Rune. Welcome to Scary Terry's Saturday Nightmare. Thanks, Terry. Thank you, thank you for having me. And not a problem, man. Now, uh, Hung's founder, Lyris Hung, a- am I pronouncing your first name right? It's Lyris, right? Yep. Yep. Okay, perfect, perfect. I, I didn't want to get uh, whacked upside the head with a Stradivarius or something. So, um, <laughs> so Hung's founder, Lyris Hung, actually put an ad on Craigslist looking for people to work with her on a heavy metal project. Is that how you found her? Uh, yeah, that's actually how I found her. Uh, it was uh, my guitar player and I had been playing together for many years previously, and uh, we had always wanted to play with a, a violin player, and uh, he, he's actually the one who came across the ad, and uh, we just decided to, uh, we lived in New Jersey at the time, we decided to go up to New York City and just see what this was about, and we went to the studio, and we arrived first, so we set up and everything, started playing, she walked in, she started warming up, she wasn't even playing anything interesting, and my guitar player and I just both looked at each other like, wow, you know. So it, it was love at first sight. It really was, yeah, I mean, we knew immediately that this was the right person, and, and we later found out that she felt the same way about us, so it was just like a perfect match you know, for all of us. Sam, I got to tell you, the last time I looked for Hung on Craigslist, I got completely different results. Uh, so uh, aside from this band, what's the strangest thing you've seen on Craigslist? Oh, man. Uh, you always see some pretty pretty wacky things on Craigslist. Uh, you know, living in New York City especially, you know, people will sell anything. So uh, mostly... Uh, I can't. Nothing pops into my mind right now as a particularly specific uh, item that was for sale. But if you if you go into uh, anything where people are trying to sell anything in New York City, you will find anything that you want. I'm going to be honest with you, Sam. When the when your record label sent a copy of your album my way, I took one look at the band's name, Hung, and I assumed it was going to be like a, a big hair spandex rock album. Were were other band names considered? No, it was. Uh, it, I've been in other bands before. You know, as a as the life of a musician, I'm sure most musicians will be able to relate to that, and you will also be able to relate to the trying times that it is coming up with with band names and. Um, when we were, when, when it first came up in conversation with us, um, Lyris just basically said I had always wanted to name a band Hung, and there was no discussion after that. It was just that's what it was going to be because it's perfect conversation starter. Um, she she already had the copyright on the name, and you know it was just it it seemed perfect. And it works. As a guy who's been happily married for uh, over a decade now, I, I, I am absolutely on board with the nod along and just go with whatever the uh, woman in question has to say. That, that works out very well for you. It's kept me off the couch for years. So. <laughs> now, uh, imagine my surprise, though, when I popped in the disc and I was greeted by an album full of progressive black death metal with classical violin work. Absolutely not at all what, it, what I was expecting when I popped in the disc. Did you guys go into the studio with this sound in mind? Um, that's actually an interesting question because uh, we we never really sat down and discussed a sound. Um, what we had talked about before there was any music was kind of just finding a sound based on writing songs. And, and we even came up with a very unique writing structure. And that kind of led its way to our sound. We don't have... We don't think about our sound when we write songs. It's more it's more like each song itself has its own sound and so we try to I guess nurture that particular thing and let it mold itself into the sound that it's going to be. I mean, in the future you'll see more albums from us and each song might change and the albums might sound a little bit different, but that's just because we're not focused on sounding a certain way. It's more look at each song as an individual and it's it's got its own purpose and its own sound and we do different things on each song and they sort of develop their own life so uh i would say no you know we we really didn't go in there with a particular sound in mind but more it evolved into its own you know form it's a very diverse disc and i i absolutely i uh, absolutely hear what you're saying every single song has its own uh, identity uh, so right. to speak and it, it you know especially in this day and age where you have record company consultants who don't want you to uh, deviate from the brand at all. You know, it, it, you get so many discs where the, where the whole album's just one slab of one sound. And it's, a, it's a refreshing to hear this level of diversity 
and, and a single album. Uh, we're we're very lucky to uh, be with a, a record label that allows all of its bands really to uh, to develop their own way, and and they don't have um, they they try not to interfere with the creative side of things. I know a lot of record labels will will really manhandle bands, and that's not good or bad. It's just you know it's what they do, and. Uh, for for us, we're very lucky to be working with a, a record label that allows us to uh, just kind of own the creative side of it. You're listening to 13 Questions on Scary Terry's Saturday Nightmare. Scary Terry's Saturday Nightmare is a three-hour metal show heard every single Saturday from 9 until midnight on Rock 94.7, 1029 in central Wisconsin, and worldwide online at rock947.com. Our interview with Sam Rune of Hung continues. Now, Sam, you've kicked around the uh, music scene for a while. How many times have you worked with a classically trained musician in the past? Never. This is uh, this is the first time. And, and you know, besides uh, Lyris being classically trained, uh, our drummer, Kenny, is also very well trained uh, in a lot of, like, world and... Uh, all, all these like jazz and Afro-Cuban beats and all this, all this crazy stuff that you know I'm, I was only exposed to a little bit in the past and he he also is so knowledgeable when it comes to music and then John my guitar player is also you know he studies a lot um, as well so for me it's kind of like I'm working in a band where everybody is actually really learned on music and then I don't even read music, <laughs> you know, so to be in a band where they're all talking about all these crazy, you know, chords and scales and things like that, you know, for, for me, it's, it's not really intimidating, but it's also, it presents its own challenges for me because then I have to go in and write something that doesn't make their heads explode. <laughs> so uh, how challenging was it to incorporate all of those different backgrounds? You have Lyris's classical background, you got Kenny's uh, jazz and world beat background, you've got your, uh, your own metal background. How challenging was it to incorporate all those styles? Well, you know, that's really, I guess that kind of brings it full circle to um, the, the sound that we've developed. Um, it really allows us to be so versatile in each song and and like I said, since we don't focus on creating a particular sound, it kind of allows each song to develop its own sound. So like, you know, if a part in a song calls for um, some kind of jazzy or feel, we can actually do that and not just do it so that it sounds jazzy, but do it in a way that actually is jazzy because these people know what they're talking about, you know? So that's, it's, it for me Personally, I guess it kind of has to mold a little bit more, um, but I think also it takes it away from being so um, learned and more like this is how I feel it's supposed to, you know, it's supposed to have this emotion. It's supposed to feel a certain way to me when I hear it. So it kind of, it, it's kind of an enhancement, if you will, um, to to sort of uh, have the technical side is all there and the learned side. And these guys also have, you know, really good feel also, but um, to have somebody who doesn't know that stuff come in and just write what he feels, I think it really enhances. Do you feel, though, that you've gained a degree of music education by working with a lyricist who uh, you know graduated from Juilliard for Pete's sake and, uh, and Kenny with his background and whatnot? Do you feel as though your own uh, personal uh, development as a musician has uh, changed working with these people? Yeah, I wouldn't say that I'm more educated now, but I would definitely say that I have a better understanding of what things will work and where, and especially because it's a progressive band, um, you, you get a lot of that. In, in every song, there's new challenges. You know, I always, I always say, like, every new song that we put out, there are exercises that I will be doing, you know, just to be able to accomplish certain parts. There's no part... Well, there's, there's some parts, but there's no song that... Um, has what I, I would say, did, or it, it doesn't have some sort of exercise or some part where I literally had to practice playing that part because when I first wrote it, I wouldn't actually be able to play it. And I think it's, you know, that's one of those things that arises from playing with such talented musicians and people who are so educated. I want to be able to keep up. And, and so, yeah, I would say they sort of drive me to become a better musician in that sense. Is this the first group you've worked with that has given you that sort of experience? Yeah. I mean, I've played with uh, thrash groups. I've played, you know, in, in bands that thought that they were progressive, but, you know, 
now being in a, a true progressive band. <laughs> Those were not progressive bands. Um, <laughs> but, you know, it's, it's, it really is the first band that has challenged me as, as a musician, and that's probably why I love it so much. 